we're going to look at a simple example of using ECAT to create or mass update master data. We'll begin by manually running the transaction end to end. This step is so obvious that it's often overlooked or intentionally skipped. But manually unit testing the scenario before attempting to record it with ECAT is the only way to confirm that dependent configuration and master data are correct in the target client. For example, notice that as a retail site master is being created, an existing business partner is adopted by the new site master. This occurs because the plant number and the business partner number are the same number, which is a best practice. When creating a retail site master, most of the fields you see in T code WB01 are filled by reference handling. The values are copied from a reference site to the new retail site. The desired result in the real world is that you click from one tab to another, confirming the entries, and only change values if needed. So this is a great simple example for illustrating ECAT. With the unit test completed, we're ready to begin working with ECAT. Start T code S ECAT, and then let's create a test script. After supplying an appropriate title and component, save the test script. Next, you're going to add a pattern. In this example, the pattern is just another word to describe an SAP GUI screen recording. Set the options and specify the transaction code to be recorded. Then let's start recording. We're going to go through the same steps that we went through when we unit tested the T code. While recording, it's important to click into each field that will require a value from an input file.
don't make any unnecessary clicks. Those will be recorded too, and unnecessary clicks can affect performance. When the transaction is finished, exit the transaction if necessary and stop the recording. Now let's connect the fields in the screen recording to the possibility of values in an input file. Double click the screen recording script, then click the Create Parameters button. ECAT creates a parameter for each screen field that was clicked. Values for the parameters can be supplied from a list of so-called variants, which can be supplied by an external data file. The names of the parameters will be the field names used in the source data file. For this reason, I prefer to adjust the parameter names to match the field names that I'll use in the source data file. The values entered for each parameter during the screen recording are also shown here. If you leave these values, then they'll be used as defaults when no value is supplied by a source data file. I prefer to delete these values and require explicit values to be supplied by the source data file, but this can be a handy feature to fill in the blanks when default values are appropriate if source data for a field is empty. Parameter values are also displayed in the parameter list and can be cleared or otherwise adjusted. Dates can be problematic if left empty in a source data file. I mark these with two single quote marks, which clears the entry if no value is supplied by the source data file. With parameters defined and parameter values maintained, save the test script. Now let's move on to prepare the source data file. You're going to prepare conventional load-ready files to serve as input to the data migration process. That means tab-delimited files with a header row consisting of tab-delimited field names. The field names in the header row match the parameter names in the ECAT test script. The order of the fields in the source data isn't important. ECAT will map the source fields to the parameters by matching the field names and the parameter names. Here's the ECAT quirk. There are fields variant and description that must be present and surrounded with square brackets. None of the other field names are permitted to have square brackets. These fields are the unique identifier and description for each variant. In this example, I've redundantly populated variant and description with the site number, which is the primary key for each variant. Now let's create a test configuration. The ECAT test configuration specifies the ECAT test script and points to the external data file with its data for variants. It also includes other settings for execution.
On the Configuration tab, specify the ECAT test script. On the Variance tab, choose External Variants and then point to the source data file. Notice that the path cannot be changed here. That path is maintained under More, Utilities, Settings. Now let's execute the test configuration. On the Variance tab, confirm that the path and external file name are correct. On the UI Control tab, there are a few options to consider. In particular, choose the Close GUIs option for Do Not Close Sessions with Errors. This ensures that when an error occurs during execution, the error remains on screen so that you can see what went wrong. Now let's execute the script and watch two transactions execute with data supplied from the source data file. There you have it, successful execution of the transaction, creating two retail site masters via ECAT from two records supplied by a source data file. Thanks for watching. Now go use what you've learned to create your own ECAT test scripts to mass create or change master data.